and my parents like drove up met with him and that's when it became like officially official where he was like yeah like you have a walk-on spot on our team like holy crap like this is really happening it's real then, yeah dude so i ended up you know making that leap and what year was I, that that was 2014 so i'm just in time to win the national championship so that was crazy ladies and gentlemen Welcome to the Hefe Sports Podcast, the best podcast in sports. Today, I'm joined by a special guest. He is a former Ohio State Buckeye and a member of the 2015 College Football Playoff National Championship team. And now he's a certified personal trainer at Colossus Barbell Club and Athletic Republic in Columbus, Ohio. Zach Turner, welcome to the show, bro. What's going on, man? Happy to be here. Great. That's great, man. So... I've been following your Instagram, man. It's really, really great, man. It's motivational. Tell me about what you've been doing. Yeah, so uh, just to kind of give you a little bit of a background, dude. So, you know, whenever I was done, um, finished up playing football, I just kind of, I really wanted to find a way to give, you know, a lot of the things that I learned back to people. And I was trying to figure out kind of like how that looked, you know, like how can I, how can I basically encapsulate all these lessons that I learned, you know, going through the process I did as a student athlete at Ohio State, you know, the overcoming of adversity, you know, battling through these tough situations and overcoming different things. You know, I just felt like by me sharing those things, you know, voicing my opinion on, you know, how to approach certain things in life just was my way of kind of showing individuals, you know, this is really, you can instill this mentality in, in no matter what it is you do. And so I just kind of found that that was my outlet is to like basically show that through that platform and through some other platforms and, and just kind of market it, like say, Hey, look, you know, like these are the things I value. These are the things I've learned from my football journey, from my student athlete journey, how it applies to my life now, my approach to things and whatnot. So Really, it's just kind of, I just see it as my platform to gift that, what I learned to people um, in my own kind of own unique way. Yeah, I love that approach because it's different than what you normally see on Instagram and Twitter. You know, everybody wants to be positive, like showing some fake image of themselves. Yeah. But I love your page because it's inspirational for one. And two, you show that, yeah, I've been through some shit, but this is how you go through the shit and come out better on the other side. Yeah, yeah. no, dude, I, I, well, I appreciate you telling me that, man, because that's really, I don't know, that's really kind of the message that I'm trying to convey is really just like showing that, you know, like you, like you, you just nailed it on the head. It's like, I feel like we get so caught up in almost like this fake image of social media where we're like putting on a front of like, Hey, like I want people to see me as this and behind the scenes, you know, I'm really this other person. It's almost like we kind of live like these double lives through social media. And like, I kind of started to feel that myself, like as I was starting to like get transition out of football and like into a corporate job and then now into what I'm doing, it was like, I just like felt so surrounded by, I don't even know, just like in authentic, like just people that like weren't being their authentic selves and like, that's just like how I feel like we're pushed as a society with social media. And so my whole approach was, I want to try and I hope I'm doing a good job. I, I sounds like, you know, I, I really appreciate your feedback, man, but I, I really do. I want to provide a very authentic approach to really all that I do, you know, just being 100% myself, um, fully authentic. Cause I don't want, you know, I just want to be perceived as someone that's going to be, you know, shooting it straight, telling the truth you know, giving it how it is, what, however that may be. Yeah. And like, I'll admit, sometimes I even struggle with that because it's social media. You can stay like distant from it, but like at the same time, it's always around you. I don't know. I've, I've talked to a lot of people about this. You can't show up. Like if you're not taking care of yourself and you can't show up for yourself, like you can't show up for other people. And so like, I just became obsessed with personal development, especially when I was kind of like hitting that wall of, you know, transitioning out of, you know, my college journey into like a corporate job, kind of hitting that wall of like, is this really what I want to do? Like, I just kind of almost had to reinvent the wheel. I had to refigure out, you know, I lived this life where like my whole, you know, my identity was wrapped up in being a student athlete. Once that left, and then I was in this, in a, in a corporate environment, it was like, 
who really am I? You know, like, what, what am I doing? Like, what, what do I really want to get out of this life? What do I want my day to day to look like? And you really just have to start to look inward, man. And like, if you don't, if you try to like live a life, you know, for other people, if you try to, you know, live by other people's expectations of what they think success is or what, you know, what you're hearing from your parents, friends, peers, things like that, you're going to be miserable deep down. Like you truly have to look inward. You have to figure out the things that, you know, truly drive you, that motivate you. Cause you want to be able to wake up every day and be living the life, you know, that you want to live. You don't want to be living someone else's life. So you were in a corporate setting for a little bit. Did you like that? Yeah, man. So for me, um, I don't know. Like I always tell people, I'm like, I, I don't ever have like anything. I don't have anything negative to say about any like corporate structures or things like that. I just don't think sometimes like it's for everyone. So like for me, I was so used to that, you know, that grind, that day to day, you know, high level expectations. Um, you know, you have to show up for the people around you. You have people relying on you. Um, and it's just a very, very intense culture that you're embodied in and it's like you have people relying on you and you have that certain level of expectation and consistent routine and and once you kind of leave that it's you have to almost invent it for yourself you know like so when I moved out of that and I got into my corporate job I was like I don't have you know these coaches and this support system you know keeping me accountable I have to hold myself accountable I know like early on I fell up down on the wayside with you know, a lot of like my health and like working out nutrition and things like that. It's because I didn't have that accountability around me. I didn't had to almost reinvent it for myself. And for me, man, it was just one of those things where I feel like if for me, I always wanted to do something that was my own. I always wanted to do something entrepreneurial. Um, honestly, ever since we did, you know, we, we used to do like real life Wednesdays where we had a lot of different companies and and business entities coming into our team and talking to us that always really fired me up. And I always just saw myself kind of as a leader where I wanted to be in an entrepreneurial setting, something that I could call my own. And I just felt that being in a corporate job wasn't going to give me that. So I had to kind of figure out where do I want to take this? You know, what do I truly love to do? What do I want my day to look like? Who do I want to help? Um, things like that. So for me, over time, man, I was, I worked in sales. I, I mean, it, went, it was great. Like I had a lot of success early on. I started out as a uh, sales rep for a chemical company based out of Dallas. I was like the local representative in Columbus. Um, within like my first year, I got promoted into a business development role. So I was helping, you know, train other sales reps throughout the country. And then by the end of the year, I got bumped up to being like a regional sales manager where I was actually like, had reps under my wing that I was managing throughout the country and um, like Texas, Seattle, uh, Chicago, some other areas. And so it was obviously a lot of responsibility, um, kind of hit some of those cylinders that I was used to with that team atmosphere, but it just like, it wasn't what I was looking for. I was just like, I kind of just still felt empty. And the more I was, you know, I was reading books, I was listening to podcasts, the more I was like, listening to these things, reading these things, it kept just kind of pushing me in the direction of doing what I felt like I was meant to do, which is what I'm doing now. And so I just, I just, again, it goes back to what we were saying with like being self-aware, focusing on personal development, what you truly like want your day to look like. I just felt like that nest wasn't necessarily giving me those things that I wanted. And the only way for me to get those things were to change, you know, what I was doing day to day. Zach, I think your story is really important to football players everywhere. Cause from what I understood when I played at Louisville and I'm sure like at Ohio state, you might've gotten a similar picture, but football's it for a lot of athletes. And oh, yeah. at some point, everybody always says the game is going to stand still. Yep. At some point you're going to have to have that realization to yourself. So yeah. if you had any advice to give, what advice would you have for them? Yeah, man. The biggest thing for me is to just, again, like it's been the whole top, like a conversation, you know, so far is really, you know, really look inward and keep a solid support system of people that, you know, are motivating you for the right reasons. I think, you know, especially in this game, depending on, you know, from whatever type of player you are, you know, you've got a ton of family in your ear, you've got a ton of peers in your ear, of, you know, hey, you should be doing this, hey, you should be doing that. Like, 
why don't you go try this, you know, like, or go try out, you know, for this league or things like that, or just everyone, you have so much in your ear at all times, you know, and even on the social media, you're fine. You're looking through your feed, you're seeing all this, just all this clutter is, is being pushed in your face. And it's really tough to make a good educated, you know, decision for yourself. And I truly think, man, you have to really, you know, take the money out of it, take every, take all factors out of it. You have to really drill it down to, Hey, look, what will I enjoy day to day? What are the things, the activities, you know, the work, what are the, what is the grind? What am I, what am I going to enjoy grinding for? I think the biggest thing a lot of people, you know, don't really think about is, you know, when we love a sport like football, um, we have those days, you know, where it's like, it sucks. You're like, all right, I really don't want to practice, but deep down, you, you love it. Like it's what you love to do. Like, no matter what, like you're willing to put in and sacrifice and grind because you love it. Um, I think a lot of people get into things where there's that grind and there's that work, but it's not for or toward something that they like. So then it's just an added stress. So it's like, you're grinding, you're putting in all this work for maybe a job or a company and you know, it's work that you're not motivated or fulfilled by. So then it's almost like, not only is it really hard, but then you're also stressed on top of that because it's not exactly what you want to do. You want to find something where you can take that feeling like you had with football, where it was like, hey, look, I don't feel like doing this 5 a.m. workout or, you know, like this practice we're about to go through is going to be hell. But deep down, I love it. And like, that's why I'm here and that's why I'm doing it. And if you can take that and fuel that into your career and what you're wanting to do or anything, whatever, whatever it may be, that's, you know, where you're going to find success. That's where you're going to be happy. One thing people kind of forget is that all good things take time. It's not going to yeah. be an overnight thing where, Oh, I found my passion teaching. That's what yeah. I'm going to do. It's going to take some time. You got to have to be patient. And another thing you just sparked my, my, uh, my memory, you got to try things. That's another thing too, is like, I feel like us as football players, like we were so, or like whatever sport you may have played like your whole life, you're so used to like a one way, like method. So it's like, you know, I played football since I was a kid and it was like climb the ladder, then in high school, then at college. And you're just, you're so used to this, like almost vertical trajectory of like what you're doing so, and you just always kind of have the expectation of like, okay, I'm grinding for, you know, college. Okay. I'm grinding for the NFL. When you kind of shift out of that and you're trying to figure out what you want to do, like job career wise, whatever it may be, you have to try things. And we're not used to that. We're used to, you know, that one way street of, we kind of know what the next thing is. We know what we're grinding for, but when you're kind of released from that and you go into the real world, it's like, you don't really know until you know. And so like, I like to think that this is what I feel like I'm driven to do. And like, you know, I truly do believe this is, you know, what I'm meant to be doing, but who knows, you know, like you have to just try, you have to try things and we're not used to that. It's uncomfortable. You're not willing to, you know, put yourself out there and try something new. Cause they're like, how are people going to perceive me? How are, you know, everyone's used to me being this football player. And, you know, what if I try this totally other end of the spectrum thing? Like, what am I going to be perceived by? That's why it's almost like, once you break free from that, you have to really detach your identity and just try things because you won't know until you try. So I would say for people that truly have no idea, you just got to try stuff and, and it's going to maybe take, you know, four or five, six different things. I mean, I remember I just saw a post. I love following the rock and like he, he, he put up a post on his Instagram about like how when he was a kid, like running around, I think Nashville, he said it was when he was like a teen, he was like, trying to sing it's like no one knew that about the rock like no one knew that the rock was trying to like do stand-up singing inside bars and stuff and it's like people probably thought he was an idiot when he was doing that so it's like you just never know and now look at the man so it's like you just never know like when you're gonna hit that that sweet spot of what really truly makes you you know happy fulfilled and and um, feels like what it is that you're meant to do so you got to just try things so, too. <laughs> what brought you into ohio the great state of ohio yeah, man. So when I was in high school, I was very like, it's kind of funny. My path kind of went like up, down, and then back to where it ended up. But basically I was one way football. I was completely all in. I'm like, I'm playing college football. That's the goal. Um, I didn't even think I had a chance to play college lacrosse early in my high school journey. I was just like, I'm from the Midwest. You know, 
any division one lacrosse school is recruiting Canadians and East coast kids. Like I, I've got no shot. <laughs> and so, um, basically throughout my high school journey, um, I was getting recruited for football by like some smaller schools. Um, at a lot of Mac schools, like one double a schools. So smaller D one D one double a schools. And then as I started to kind of pick up my lacrosse game, it's actually kind of crazy. I'll try to like tell the story as condensed as possible, but basically I had no intentions of playing college lacrosse at this point. I was probably like a sophomore, junior in high school and a coach from like the East coast area came to Missouri and basically ran this club team called Missouri 22. And I never played club lacrosse. That was like, I don't know, the big thing to do in the Midwest if you wanted to get recruited was to like pay a bunch of money to, to play on one of these travel teams. And they didn't even really go to that grade of tournaments, to be honest. It was honestly more of like a money grab, <laughs> if I'm being honest. So like, I never really bought into it. I'm like, ah, it's not really worth it. Like, I don't, it's not really what I want to do. And so this guy came into Missouri and coached at one of our actual rival schools. And he basically thought of this whole project called Missouri 22, where they would allow like the whole state of Missouri to try out and only 22 kids would make it. And so that was the catch. It was like, if you were one of those 22 kids, like it's everything's paid for. So a lot of these club teams, you'd have to pay like thousands and thousands to like play for them. And like this whole thing was like, hey, look, anybody in Missouri can try out. Only 22 people are making it. And as part of the evaluation process for that tryout, this coach that was from up east brought in like a ton of collegiate, like literally like some very prominent, like Duke I know was there, like really prominent division one coaches to basically come in town and evaluate. So it was kind of like a a win-win for them like they could recruit and then they could also be like the people that evaluate the players and help decide who these 22 kids would be and so it was basically like area high school coaches and collegiate coaches that evaluated and decided who these 22 kids would be and it's funny because I had no intention of trying out for this team and it was on a weekend and I remember getting a phone call from his name's Eddie Condon he was my lacrosse coach and he was like Z like where the hell are you are you not trying out for this and I'm like ah you know like I don't I just don't really want to I I didn't really it was something I didn't really want to do and he's like he's like you're crazy he's like get up here right now so I kid you not I I like raced home from like a friend's house it was like a Saturday morning went home grabbed my lacrosse bag and went to this tryout and ended up I guess doing really well (laughs) um it was just one of those things like I wasn't really even prepared for it so I just like went into it and ended up um, really like, I remember the Duke coach told like my high school coach and a couple of the other coaches like, hey, that's the best kid at this camp. I ended up like making the, making the 22 team. I ended up being a captain on the team. And then that's like where my recruitment for lacrosse just took off. So like from that tryout of me just like randomly coming, like I didn't even, int- I wasn't even intending on going. That's how my lacrosse recruitment took off. Like Rutgers was there, Duke was there. Um, a couple like D2 schools were there, um, coach, coach representation wise. And so Rutgers really, they just started recruiting me off the bat. Um, they actually offered me like a week later after that camp to play lacrosse there. And then once they offered me, it was kind of just like a trickle effect, kind of how football works. Like, um, Michigan then was calling me and then Ohio state knocked on my door. So I was like, okay, cool. So I had a really good conversation with uh, Nick Myers, who is still currently the head lacrosse coach at Ohio State. And I always wanted to go to a big school. So that's why I started to get like very enticed by this lacrosse recruitment, because I was getting more so recruited by smaller schools for football. And then now all of a sudden it's like, wow, like I always wanted to go to a big school and all these big schools are now recruiting me for lacrosse. So it was just like, okay, like as a young kid, I'm like, this is kind of what I was looking for. Like, I want to, I want a taste of the the big, the big schools and things like that. And so I, um, like I said, had a great conversation with Nick Myers, ended up like several weeks later, taking a visit up to Columbus, um, an unofficial visit and absolutely just fell in love with it. I was like, all right, this city is, this city is it. Like, I always want to go to big school. Like this place is unreal. Like, Hey, let me, guess, let me guess, was the breaking point Bulls? <laughs> <laughs> probably was, man. Probably was. Yeah. <laughs> there was a lot of enticing uh, nightlife 
scenes as well um <laughs> oh yeah can't be so, yeah no dude i just like yeah i fell in love with it and i just got this like gut feel oh and then well on that visit i was not expecting at all to get offered by them it was my first time visiting and then um nick myers pulled me aside like right before my parents and i were leaving he's like hey by the way like because i was late in the recruitment process with like lacrosse terms because i was like sophomore junior in high school and like basically everyone's committed by like sophomore year for college it's just crazy how lacrosse works and so i was like a junior and and he's like hey look you know we actually have like one scholarship left like if you want to take it like the offer is yours and i was just like holy cow like this is too good to be true and i basically was like I didn't make a rash decision on the jump. I was like, all right, I'll, I'll take, I'll take that home and think about it. But literally like, I think it was, I'd have to ask my parents, but it was probably like the next day or so I called them and I'm like, I'm committing. Like I'm, I just knew it was like this gut feeling I had. I'm like, I want to, I want to take off with it. Like this is everything I wanted with a school. And you know, that was something that like my, my dad and my mom always told me was like, Hey, look, like, if you, they would always tell me this, like, if you were at a school, like imagine yourself, like obviously forbid this ever happens, but if you got injured and your athletics were taken away from you, what school would you want to be at? Like, and they, they really added that perspective. Cause there, there's obviously like some schools that are throwing you offers that you're like, wow, this is enticing, but is it actually a school I want to be at? And so they, they really kind of opened my perspective to that. And yeah, man, literally, I would say like the next day or so I committed um, my high school football coaches were like shocked. They're like, cause they knew how much I love football, but they were also very supportive. Everybody was super supportive during all of this, which is great. So no, yeah, man. So I, I visited, had an unbelievable visit committed, like within the next couple of days to play lacrosse at Ohio state. And that, that's really what brought me to Columbus. Okay. So Lax brought you to Columbus and I understand during college, you kind of had a little switch up. So can you describe what your lacrosse experience was like and what happened? Yeah, absolutely, man. So this was definitely like a huge, I would say like this was the first time in my life during this like decision where I was really hit with like what we've been talking about this whole time, like looking inward, looking to what is, what is it that I really want? You know, like, was I, you know, getting enticed by what I thought I wanted? I was just trying to dig deep down, like, Hey, what did I real? what do I really want here? And I remember like, as I was going throughout my freshman year playing lacrosse, I was seeing like a lot of the guys I played high school football with, like doing really well at some big division one schools. And I'm like, man, like, I feel like I kind of left something on the table here. Like, I feel like I, I really could do what they're doing. And then, and, and I don't want to like do the comparison game, but I was just seeing like, Hey, look, like these are some guys I played with and they're, you know, doing really well and loving it. And like, playing at these really cool schools like I mean there's part of me was just starting to realize like you know did I make the right decision I started having those feelings I'm like should I have given football up like really just started thinking long and hard about it and I honestly like the first thing I did was I just turned to my support system kind of like what we talked to earlier you know I talked with my parents I was talking to both my high school lacrosse and football coaches I was talking to you know, friends, family, everything about, you know, like, Hey, look, like I'm having these feelings. Like, what, what is your advice? What do you think? Like, should I, you know, what, should I explore other options? Like, what should I do? And luckily they all were kind of saying the same thing. Like you got to do what makes you happy, which is great. Like kind of like what we talked about earlier, sometimes those outside voices can influence you the wrong way. But luckily, you know, I had that support system that was like, Hey, you, you basically long story short, look inward and find out what's going to make you happy. And so I just started doing that, man. I just remember like time after time again, I'm like, man, I, I just like, I want to play football. I'm like, I feel like for like lacrosse and football are very similar. I feel like I'm just like a football guy. Like I just like, there's a certain like passion and, and just love that I had for football. And I had that with lacrosse, but I don't think to the degree that I had with football. It was just like very, that football passion that I had was so ingrained in me. And I just felt like I had, I'm like, I wanted that. I wanted to feel that again. I like really wanted to get back into that sport um, in some capacity. And I really didn't know what to do. So um, I was trying to decide, I even explored potential like transfer options. Like I was talking to my high school coach. I'm like, Hey, look, like I'm having these feelings. You think like any of these schools that recruited me would still take me if I were to transfer 
Um, things, so we, we started to weigh those options. And then I'm like, well, you know, I really don't want to leave Ohio State. Like I came to this city, like loving this school, loving this area. Um, I didn't want to leave. So then that made the decision really hard. I'm like, well, I don't want to leave. Um, <laughs> I don't really have many options at this point. It's like either join Ohio State football team or, you know, I don't know, transfer. And so I knew I didn't want to transfer. And I basically, funny story, the only person I knew at the time on the football team was, was actually Zeke. So he's from St. Louis. And so he's actually like one of the first people that I texted whenever I was making this transition. And he wasn't like a household name yet. He was also young too. He was like a freshman playing on special teams. Like he wasn't really Zeke yet. And so I hit him up and I was, it was, this was like my freshman year. It was like 2013. He was a freshman. I was a freshman and we had like met each other in St. Louis. Like I remember we were both on, I was on like a visit to Mizzou um, and he was there too. And some of the other kids from my high school, we all met and I like met him out at a party and he's like, Oh yeah. Like you're going there for lacrosse. I'm going there for football. We kind of like basically became contacts that way. And so I texted him and I'm like, Hey man, like, you, you actually like knew what I was like in high school. Like, do you think I have any chance like on the Ohio state football team? And he's like, he's like, dude, I mean, like, I honestly think you could play like special teams and you know, stuff like that. And I'm like, all right, cool. <laughs> and then, so I like hit up my high school coaches about it and a lineman from my high school at the time was like getting heavily recruited by like a lot of big 10 schools and sec. So my high school coach actually knew Ed Warner, who was our old offensive line coach and got me in touch with him. And I kind of, I like sent over my highlights and stuff and started to communicate with like those coaches. And um, yeah, like they started to show interest and they're like, basically they're like, Hey, look, like we don't even need you to try out. Like if, if you're thinking about joining the team, like you, you have a spot on the team. And I'm like, Holy crap. Like, <laughs> this is crazy. Like one thing's leading to the next. And then um, <clears throat> I know like me and my parents actually, well, before this happened, before we uh, drove up there to talk to them, I did have a really good conversation with uh, Nick Myers. So before I really like got into talking with the football staff, for, I've left out this point, but I, I did have a meeting with Nick Myers on the lacrosse side of things, the head coach, and he was incredibly supportive, so supportive. He was like, hey, look, man, you know, I get it. He's like, you always have a home here if you, if this is something you feel like you need to do and you'll regret it, if you don't like go do it. And so I, I couldn't have asked for a better, you know, support from him because, you know, I committed there. I, I joined the team on scholarship to play lacrosse. They offered me that opportunity and for him to, you know, be that selfless and be able to, you know, basically support me in that direction was huge. I mean, I, I, I felt, I was so torn I'm, you know, like being a young kid, I'm like, I'm going to, you know, crush, I don't want to crush my relationships with the lacrosse team. Like, and it's awesome. It all just worked out. Cause I mean, I I'm literally some of my best friends till this day are guys that I played with on the lacrosse team at Ohio state. We still talk till this day, all super close. So Nick Myers was awesome, super supportive. And then that's when, yeah, I basically started really talking with coach Warner talking about, I think Greg Gillum. Yeah. He was the uh, like recruiting coordinator at the time for Ohio state. So me and my parents like drove up, met with him. And that's when it became like officially official where he was like, yeah, like you have a walk-on spot on our team. I'm like, holy crap, like this is really happening. It's real. And then, yeah, dude. So I basically was like, all right, I'm doing it. And I uh, basically told like coach Myers on the lacrosse side, like I'm going to step away from lacrosse and walk on the football team at Ohio state. And so I did, man. So I ended up, you know, making that leap. And what year was I, that? That was 2014. So I just in time to win the national championship. So that was crazy. So it was like my first year on the football team as a walk on. We literally won the national championship. And now, like, Zach, tell me, tell me. So that first year, first yeah. practice that had like you had to be emotional. Tell me what that first practice was like. Oh, my at God. Ohio State football. Um, so you always think I think like all of it. I mean, that's why I always pride the guys that come in as freshmen and they just like somehow are prepared because I don't know what whoever their trainer is like call me up because like I don't know how you prepare anybody for everything that they throw at you because dude I mean it was one of those things where you think like oh I was so good in high school like I'm gonna come in and just I'm gonna you know, be the man you like yeah, I'm gonna be buff the out man. your chest 
Yeah. Yeah. You're like, I'm going to kick ass. You know, I'm going to play right away. And you get humbled real quick. Um, I would remember like my first practice, it was like, I was completely and utterly exhausted. Like after the warm up, like just dead. And I'm like, all right, this is crazy, man. What did I, I'm like, what did I do here? <laughs> You're like, coach Myers, what's up? <laughs> yeah. Me back. Like, man, what did I do? <laughs> oh, so man. it was definitely, man, I'll tell you. Yeah. It's not, it's like nothing you can prepare for and nothing that you can be ready for. You either just it's like a, it's like a hundred, it's like a 400 mile per hour train and you either jump on and hang on for dear life or you just get passed up. Like that is the best analogy I can think of. <laughs> Cause I mean, it is, it's just like, it's, it's an elite program, man. I mean, the way that, you know, coach Meyer ran that program was very, very, I won't compare it like, cause obviously like the military is a whole nother level, but it was a very militaristic approach, you know, high high level of expectation for everyone um i think the so best yeah, comparison I, would be kind of to like the new england patriots style of yeah running sure. an organization absolutely dude so I, I mean when i made that jump here i'm thinking like oh everything's great you know i'm gonna play and and the journey was just beginning little did i know i was like hey i'm making this big like proud jump from lacrosse to football like i feel like i deserve all this stuff you know like i made this leap like I deserve playing time. We all think that we're like, Oh, I deserve this. I deserve that. We think, you know, we're entitled to all this stuff, you know? Um, and then you get a rude awakening and you're like, all right, I've got a long journey to go. You know, if you really want to do this thing, like, you know, there's, there's some people that join the team where it's like, they kind of know what they're getting into. And then they're like, yeah, I'm just going to kind of ride it out and, you know, do what I can and try to play maybe, but then like, fall by the wayside and then just kind of give up. Like there's a lot of that kind of attitude, but I was kind of one of those guys where it's like, I always just knew like deep down, I'm like, this is like why, like no matter how discouraged I ever got or however, you know, people told me, you know, like, why are you even trying? Like, dude, it's Ohio State. Like you're a walk on, like, why are you even trying? And like, no matter all through all of that, I just always like held on to like a deep, deep belief. Like I can play here. I know I can do it. Um, and trust me, man, I mean, there were times, I mean, several years went by, I didn't touch the field and I was just like, man, like this, this is tough, man. Cause like you're sacrificing. I mean, like most students, like I, I love giving an example of like Christmas break, like, you know, most students are home for like three or like a whole month, like three, four weeks. It's like, we're home for maybe less than a week. And like you're sacrificing all this time, like with family, you're sacrificing these fun trips with your friends. And you're like, dude, what am I doing? Like, why am I putting all this in for, you know, this such little return? I'm like, what is my return on investment here? <laughs> and so, uh, so yeah, there was a lot of that, man, a lot of um, questioning. Um, definitely, definitely, definitely a hard journey, but I'm glad I stuck with it. <laughs> yeah. And you guys had an excellent season. I think that goes without saying, but tell me, was there a time where you met your friend Zeke in the hole and you got to, you had to little show him a little bit what Zach Turner's about. Was, <laughs> yeah. there, was there any time like that? Yeah, I remember, well, I think not even Zeke, but I definitely had like some with Zeke, obviously, as I was playing like scout team and things like that, but I'll never forget. It was like my second practice um it was like my second or third practice and it was like it was like one of the days leading up to game day so we weren't really hitting that hard and here I'm like oh I'm just I gotta make a statement <laughs> and so <laughs> I remember it was uh I think it was actually Rod Smith and he's still been bouncing around the league a little bit um but he was it was like I was on scout kickoff and he was on kickoff return and I remember like just running down and just hitting him as hard as I possibly could and I like get a, I got a text like after practice from, <laughs> from our, our uh, linebacker, like graduate assistant at the time. And I'm like, he's like, Hey, come see me. And I'm like, Oh man, like I did something good. And, <laughs> and he's like, he like, he's like, don't ever hit anybody like that again. <laughs> and I'm like, Oh my God, I can't catch a damn break. <laughs> so yeah, there was definitely a lot of that, man. It, it's not a, uh, I will say this coming in as a walk on it's not an easy path you really are kind of like you're almost just like on an island because like 
all the, a lot of the coaches, you know, they have the expectation for the scholarship players, you know, they, it's like their job to get these guys on the field. So it's like, you're, you're not really someone that's a, you're, priority. you're just an afterthought. Like, honestly, yeah, you're an afterthought. walk on is an afterthought. Yes. Yeah. It sucks to say that, but like <laughs> being a bro, I remember times where like the whole locker room would be doing something else. And like, I would just be outside, just like looking over here, just like looking yeah. at everybody else on the team, just doing like doing whatever they're doing. And yeah, then, man. Oh my God, bro. The practices, like, you're lower than shit when you're a walk-on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's definitely how it is, man. So here, yeah, you're not ready for that. Like, you think, like, oh, like, it's going to just go great. You know, you're going to go in there and crush it. And then, like I said, you are just, like, you are um, you are grounded quickly. Right. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Zach, I'm going to tell you about one time I was playing. Like, there was two guys on our team that, went pro when I played for yeah. uh, Louisville. One of them, he just, um, he just 11th pick overall in this past draft, Makai Becton. Yeah. So yeah. I had him line up against me. I'm playing defensive tackle, all five, 10, 225 of me playing defensive. Yeah. Tackle. Makai Becton, six, seven, three twenty at the time. Mm -hmm. Then we had our captain, um, Lucas McNeil, six, five, 300. And, you know, like, as a defensive lineman, you're kind of taught to, like, accept the double team and, like, sit down and, like, try yep. to hold your ground. Bro, these two guys came at me. My eyes were like that, first yeah. off. My <laughs> eyes went big. I'm just, like, sitting here trying to do what the coach is telling me. And I swear to God, bro, I was off the ground for two yeah. feet. Like, oh, yeah. Like, Superman, bro. They actually, like, put me in the air and drove oh, yeah. me back. Coach Petrino's like, God damn it, get him the hell out of here. I'm like, coach, I'm like, you want to come here and try this, bro? Like, go yeah, ahead. Yeah, why don't try you it. try, coach? Oh, my <laughs> God. Bro, walk on life, that's just no joke, man. So, Zach, you talk about earning a scholarship, and you actually did earn a scholarship. Now, that mm -hmm. is a battle in and of itself. Tell me what your mindset was when you got that, or what emotions did you have when you got that scholarship? Dude, yeah, I mean <laughs> – Dude, that whole, that whole process, like, like forever changed my life, like changed my mindset, changed my whole, you know, approach. And like, it sounds silly, but it's just like, so true. It really did. You know, um, I was at the time, like, it was just like, walk, it was just unheard of let walk-ons played. Like, I, obviously, like right now, like current Ohio State Buckeyes, it's seeming like you know, under Ryan Day, from what I've seen, there's like more guys like getting opportunities and things like that. But when I like the era that I played for Ohio State, it was like, it was just like walk ons don't play. Like we had like two anomaly. I know like two guys I really looked up to uh, Craig Feta and Joe Berger, because those were two walk ons that were playing um, whenever I was like trying to play. And I just remember looking up to them like tremendously. I'm like, holy shit, like these guys did it. I'm like, that could be me, you know, like, why not? You know, they did it. Why can't I? And, but at the time, dude, I mean, it was just like unheard of. I mean, we had like, me and Justin would always joke around because like on special teams alone, we had like four and five deep, like crazy. Like, like we're not even talking defense, offense. I'm like, I'm like, I'm climbing the uphill battle of there's like third, fourth and fifth string on punt. Like, this is crazy. <laughs> um, like, how am I ever going to play? And so I just like, man, I always just had that drive inside me. I'm like, I can, I just knew like deep down I could do it. And I had, I had other walk-on friends on the team that were like, dude, like, why are you trying? Like, we know like walk-ons don't play. I had that in my ear. Um, I also had my own, you know, negative mindset of like, what am I doing sacrificing all this? And like, maybe I'm never going to play. Like maybe this won't ever actually happen. And yeah, man, I mean, trust, it was like, that first year I walked on, didn't play, was dealing with a lot of that. Second year, even 2015, you know, 2014, then 2015, same exact deal. Um, and then, man, I was just like, after that, I'm like, dude, like, what am I doing? Like, this is just, this is a grind, dude. And I don't know if I'm like willing to keep doing this, you know, I'm, I'm like giving it everything I got. And I think, you know, this, this was like the biggest life lesson was during that time, I just always felt sorry for myself. I'm always like, I always was like, you know, I deserve to play, you know, I'm, I'm, I know what I'm capable of. I'm, I just, I deserve to play. And like, I feel like that's what 
you know, us as human beings, no matter what it is, football, you know, job, career, we just like have that natural human emotion of like, we we should, or we deserve these certain things, you know, um, especially it happens. Like I just, you see it in sports all the time. You're like, dude, you know, I crushed it, you know, in high school or like, I'm killing it now. Like, why am I not playing? Like, why, why this, why this blame, blame, blame. And you have to look like at, again, it's just been the theme of the whole conversation, looking inward, you know, what can I control? What are the things, you know, can I control what this coach, you know, he, he decides to do, or can I control, you know, my like certain situations that maybe I can't. And if you start to really eliminate the things that you can't control and really start focusing on the things you can control, that's when you start to, you know, see some success. And that's really kind of what I did, dude. I started to, you know, I started to really like strategically figure out, you know, all right, these coaches are going to be watching. I knew like, Hey, like on this special teams drill, they're going to be watching film, you know, on this specific thing, or like they're going to be looking at this specific drill or this specific point in practice. And I started to pick up on those tendencies and I'm like, well, if I want to get noticed, I'm going to have to do very well in those moments. And I kind of started to pick up on that um, going into my like red shirt, junior, senior year, call it um, since I played four years of football. And then the one year of lacrosse, I technically was there for four and a half years, but yeah, dude, I just was like, hey, look, like they're evaluating these certain plays. Like, I know I have to show out in these opportunities that I get and I have to make every rep the best because I don't know which rep they're going to show in our special teams meeting or in our defensive meeting, but I have to perform every, every play. And so that's kind of what I started to do, man. I started to just like go as hard as I possibly could, like not let any of the negativity around me, like influence my demeanor on the field when I had those opportunities in practice. And so I just, you know, I just kind of like put on the tunnel vision. I'm like, I'm going to start grinding, you know, showing out. And that's kind of when coach Meyer, like first really noted, he didn't have any idea who I was like, he doesn't really know who most walk-ons are. He doesn't even know most of their names. And so I remember in like a special teams meeting, like I had like a really good play against like our starting, like one of the other, like one of the starters. And he was just like, who's that guy? And like, everyone's like, everyone, everyone nicknamed called me meat. And so everyone's like, that's me, like me, like blah, blah, blah. I'm like, oh my God. And then he like told me to like stand up and stuff. And so that was like my first kind of pivotal moment of like, all right, like they're starting to like kind of notice who I am. And um, it's just like, that didn't really happen with most guys. So I was like, all right, this is good. That was like the first good step in the right direction. Um, and then I started to kind of like get in that, thrown in that depth chart range of like you know throw it on like a few of the units like third or fourth string you know I'm like damn well okay I'm getting somewhat recognition like at least they're throwing me up there you know what are the chances I actually play probably not and so that was like the first pivotal moment and I'm like started to gain some momentum um but still again wasn't really playing and then dude I'll tell you what um me and Justin dude I'll tell you like this is where like I think we really became like best friends was like we had both it was going into my senior year we were going into camp so it was like all spring was like when they started to take notice of me going into my senior year redshirt junior year and um still wasn't playing but was getting noticed and I'm like, like man like we gotta just figure this out and uh me and Justin were starting to become like good friends at the time and he was battling obviously injuries and things like that um and then I was battling battling like the walk-on thing and like trying to play and we were going into that camp um like I said my junior year and we just kind of like banded together we're like hey look dude like let's just like be almost like accountability partners like I'm gonna hold you accountable and make sure like you're bringing your good attitude every day like no matter what happens like we've got nothing to lose at this point like we can't keep blaming shit we can't keep you know feeling sorry for ourselves. It's like, let's just literally go so hard every day of camp, day in and day out, practice every hour of practice, go as hard as we possibly can. And we'll make it hard for them not to notice us and not like be like, okay, we got to do something. Like we got to play these guys. And so we really did, man. I'll tell you what, I, I love that kid for it because like we just banded together, dude. I mean, like 
we held each other accountable. Like when he was down, I'd pick him up. When I was down, he'd pick me up. And man, we just held each other accountable. Like that whole entire fall camp. And I kid you not, we just like left it all out there. And that's like when I was like first thrown in with like the starting with a couple of the starting special teams units. So like from that, I then started like, it's like, holy shit, it worked. You know, like we decided to stop feeling sorry for ourselves, push each other and, and get each other to that point. And we both started playing on special teams. Um, and man, yeah, back to kind of, I know that was a long tangent, but back to what you said about like, you know, what did that feel like? I hadn't even gotten a scholarship yet. And it was just, I'll never forget. It was like my first time playing in, in a game and it was against Bowling Green. I was in on like punt and kickoff. And I remember it was literally my birthday too. It was like my 21st birthday um, on the day of my birthday that I played and, and like started on these units. And dude, I remember like coming off the field and like meeting up with my parents. I literally like without it, I didn't even, wasn't even able to control it. I just started like crying. Cause I was like, it was literally like years and years and years and years of shit just accumulated. And then it's like, you finally like reach that goal that like you yourself at times only believe. And it's like, holy shit. Like it really happened. And it just smacked me. And I had no control. I'm like, I was even, I was telling him like, why am I crying? Like, what is going on? And that's dude, like, it's just like, it was so overwhelming to experience that. Cause like I said, I mean, for years and years and years, it was like, you know, I had people telling me like, you know, dude, why are you even trying? Like give up, you know, like walk-ons don't play coaches even that were like, you know, why are you trying, you know, what are you doing? And then dude, like when you just hold that belief and then the scholarship was just the icing on the cake, dude. Um, literally. Yeah. Going into my final year, you know, coach Meyer, um, he actually called me into his office like going into that senior year and he was like, Hey, like basically we had a good long conversation and he was just like, Hey, you keep doing your things. Right. Like, I think we're going to be able to get you a scholarship. And then like, when he first told me, that, I was just like, Oh my God. So it was just like one thing after the next dude. And uh, yeah, man. Um, when it became official, that was just another super, super emotional moment. So both of those, both of those moments, like my first time, like starting in a game on special teams and then, going into my senior year where I was pretty much on every single unit and, and playing at fullback on offense. Cause they switched me over to offense and I played in several games at fullback um, blocking for JK and some of our other running backs, you know, it was just, dude, I mean, it like literally a dream come true. Um, like I said, it was one of those things that I thought about, I dreamed of, I worked for, and it, it came to fruition, dude. And it, it, it literally that, that whole entire experience just, literally changed me and like I, I truly believe like my whole mindset everything that I'm doing now is totally a product of that experience man that is so heartwarming bro to hear that story <laughs> like that's just gripping because having been through something like that in my life I had two ACL injuries and people kept telling me like don't even try to play college football like walking yeah, on your, your joke like, yeah just hearing that and like, I really burst into tears when I was talking with my parents, but bro, just to go through something like that and make yeah. it through the other side, that changes, like you're saying, it changes your whole life. Yes. Like, do you feel that you're kind of not like the rest where like, you're so driven, you're so determined in your life and you see other people off to the side who maybe aren't determined. Like, do you feel that difference? Yeah, man, I really do. And I, and it's not like one of those things I try to like explain this to people. And it's not like, it's never a matter of like, I'm better than you or like, I did this. And I'm like, just like, I'm better than you. That's like, not what it's about. It's like, I basically went through this. And not all people go through something like that. And it basically just unearths an ability inside of you that you never knew you had and people just don't it's not something that's normal to experience I don't think you're ever driven or pushed to a point where you find that inside of you and and unearth it and that's why I love doing so much of what I do now with the training because I'm a deep believer that you can reveal that in people through this avenue and 
that's what motivates me. That's what drives me to do what I do now is because I know that not everybody went through that experience or pushed themselves through a crazy wall of adversity that they never thought that they could. Um, and so that's why I'm so motivated to do what I do and help people find that push point and find that breaking point of this is what I never thought I could ever accomplish. And it's amazing, dude. I really, yeah, like you said, I don't think many people do because I think we, again, live in a, you know, a society, a culture of comfortability, you know, do what's comfortable. Um, you know, if that was hard, you know, most, that's why most walk-ons quit. You know, you probably saw it at Louisville, you know, a lot of guys think that they can do it, you know, but they can't and they quit and then, which is fine. You know, like if that's their decision, that's their decision, but doing like pushing through and, and accomplishing things like that, just teaches you an intangible lesson that like you just don't get from everyday life. And so, like you said, yeah, I don't think, or I feel that, that a lot of people don't have that, but then that's what motivates me where I'm like, Hey, look, I did go through that. I did experience this thing. How can I help other people do it too? Basically. Yeah. See, that's kind of where me and you differ. Cause I guess like I, you're like further along the journey than I am. But right now it's like, I know that what I went through kind of molded me into this person. And like, I'm still getting all this shit from everybody else saying like, dude, like, why are you going so hard? Or like, yeah, just chill. Like, cause like, I'm always like, boom, like I need to get better. I need to like keep progressing in my life and I need to like reach my goals. Yeah. But then I got all these people who like, they're in my corner, but they're like, they're just in the corner yeah. and they're not going to help me get to where I want to go to. And they're just going to like nag me and just like try to bring me down. And yeah, so dude. like, I don't really, I don't really see a reason why I should try to bring them along with me. Yeah. And like, I don't know, like, did you, were you experiencing that at all on your journey? And like, how did you yeah. get through that? Yeah, dude. Um, absolutely. Um, I always like to use the analogy, dude, like you can't, I mean, you can leave, you can lead the horse to the water. You can't force them to drink. Um, you are going to have those people in your life. And, you know, I still have, um, you know, I still have like very close friends that like I grew up with or, you know, that I was, was close to through college and high school and things like that, that I'm still very close to, like you said, in my corner, um, that very much so don't have that same mindset. Um, and I don't know if I'm ever going to be able to change them or change that mindset for them to, you know, kick it in gear and, be disciplined and accomplish those goals like you talked about um i think that's the biggest thing or the biggest reason why you just have to be you know the most authentic self that you can be you know and market that like show people by your own discipline show people through example show people how you know you want to reach your goals and that alone like i said you can only tell people so much uh, you know um but by you leading from example, you know, you setting the example of what modeling, what that looks like, you're, you're without even realizing it, you're bringing other people along. Um, and like you said, I don't think you really ever have to write anybody off. I don't think obviously like you want to surround yourself with people that are going to motivate you. I would say the people you spend the most time with, those are the kind of people you want to be around, not the people that might be, you know, like you said, you know, in your corner, but not really in your corner. Um, but dude, just be, I would say like, take pride in being that, that shining light for them, you know, like whether, whether or not they're going to be willing to change or, you know, adopt that same mindset and approach that you may have, it doesn't go out to say that you can't be that model that you can't be that example for them. And you never know, dude, someday they might tell you like, yo, Jeff, you know, like you changed my life, dude. Like I never thought I'd see the day, but following you, you know, doing what you're doing, living the life that's, you know, that you take passion in and that you're love, loving and fulfilled in. You never know, dude, one of those friends or one of those people in your corner are going to thank you one day, you know, even some of the people that you never thought would. And so I would say that's the biggest thing, dude, It's just if you have, you know, if you're determined to accomplish certain things, like you just, you just keep your tunnel vision, man, and surround yourself with people that will support it, the people that don't, just think of it as, Hey, look, I'm going to be an example for them. You know, if they're not willing to change, I can't force it on them, but 
you know, I'm going to make it hard for them not to notice, you know, the things I'm doing. And hopefully it does influence them to some capacity to kick things in gear. What do you think about this Ohio State team right now? Do you see any yeah. similarities between your team and this team? Yeah, man. I mean, for sure. Um, I think, dude, like one of the biggest things when people ask me about that year we won the national championship, I mean, it became one of those things where that team was so talented and just so bonded that like after, especially after we beat Alabama in the sugar bowl, I mean, you could have literally thrown any team in the country at us and we're going to win. Like it was just, it was literally like a mindset shift. It was almost like a swagger about the team where it was like, I don't care who we play. Like we know how good we are and we know what we're capable of. I mean, it's actually, it was after the Wisconsin game, like, after we beat them 59, nothing, I mean, in the big 10 championship, that was like, dude, throw anybody at us. We're winning. Like we will. And I feel like the team now is like developing that swagger amidst all the bullshit happening around us with, you know, COVID and everything and all the adversity that those poor kids, those poor seniors are going through with, you know, God, I mean, I can't even imagine, but, um, and Justin, even, I know that kid's the most, positive human being on this freaking earth <laughs> and uh he's I mean dude there I I just see it I definitely see something special with this team I think uh I think they've definitely got that kind of it factor on um all cylinders it's just a matter of them coming together and bonding as a team amidst all the bs and all the stuff going on you know around them but if they can I mean they've got the talent dude if they band together and you know, finish this season out strong and continue to build that bond. That's, that's what runs the table, dude. When you have that, when you have that bond across the team, you know, where everybody's counting accountable, everybody's playing at that high level, you have no deficiencies anywhere, special teams, defense, offense, everything, uh, coaching, everything. So I, I mean, I think that they have that. I mean, I see it, you know, with the way they play um, it comes with time throughout the season. So We'll see how it shapes up, but I, I don't see why they can't run the table, man. I mean, they've got a good shot. Yeah, I agree. And it's really, it's really cool to see the brotherhood that they have. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. that is something that everybody wants to have as a team, but like, it seems like Ohio state year in and year out, like there's something about this place that brings everybody together and yeah. enables them to just run through walls. It's yeah. insane. Mm-hmm. So Zach, before I let you go, man, you're doing a hell of a job with your PT stuff, your training. Is there anything that you want to let your fans know about or let you have anything exciting coming up or anything like that? Yeah, man, I got some, some things in the works, um, building more and more kind of my brand, my business and things like that. Um, got some cool things coming in the near future with another ex- Ohio State teammate of mine we're we're really kind of banded together on the business side of the of the PT stuff both online and for in person so we got some stuff brewing on that end but yeah man I mean if I could tell anybody anything I'm just we kind of nailed it on the head in the beginning man and, and throughout this conversation is you know it's I'm using this as an avenue to help other people kind of unearth that hidden ability inside themselves that they didn't realize and you know for me I know a lot of the, you know, characteristics and change that I experienced as a football player and as a man was, you know, through the grueling training day in and day out and, you know, the discipline of showing up when you didn't want to show up, you know, doing the things that were uncomfortable, pushing yourself, you know, to achieve certain things that you didn't think were achievable. A lot of that happened, not only obviously on the field, but all that mindset mindset shift happened off the field, training, being disciplined in your routine, showing up, doing the little things right day in and day out, doing all those little things consistently over time, compounding is what brings you success. And I'm trying to take that whole philosophy, that whole entire approach and give that to my clients. So not only can they obviously reach Obviously, yeah, everyone wants to reach their fitness goals. Everyone wants to get stronger, get leaner, get, sh get shredded, all that stuff. That's all great. <clears throat> I want to help impact their whole entire life. I want that discipline, you know, that approach to their routine, that consistency on a day-to-day -day basis trickle over into 
how they approach their family, how they approach their loved ones, how they approach their job, how they approach their life. Because I think that those principles of discipline, consistency, showing up, being accountable is all built upon doing the things that you do with training, with being disciplined and, you know, your health and your fitness and things like that. And it does permeate to all aspects of your life. So I would say, man, that's, that's my whole approach. Um, so I'm glad I get to voice that. I try to voice that through my social media, um, the things that I'm posting and the things that, <clears throat> that I'm talking with other individuals about. That's, that's the message I'm trying to convey. So I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to kind of voice that. Um, I haven't really, you know, put a face to that, like saying, I would say with my approach. So you've kind of enabled that for me, man. So I appreciate it. So yeah, I mean, whoever does listen, you know, that's, they, they can know that that's my approach. That's kind of what I take pride in and just doing what I love every single day, man, bringing that energy, bringing that, uh, bringing that, that discipline and consistency to all my clients and everybody I work with. So yeah, man, that's what I'm going for. Hell yeah, bro. I love it. I love it. So give a shout out to your socials real quick. Yeah. So uh, yeah, you can follow me on Instagram at Zach uh, Turner. So T-U-R-N-U-R-E. It's a funky spelling. Um, a lot of people get my last name wrong. So. <laughs> so yeah, follow me on Instagram. That's the one I'm most active on. Dope, man. Well, Zach, thank you so much for coming on today, my friend. Yeah, man. Hey, I appreciate you, dog.